Today I am going to talk about uh, is type 1 diabetes 33. Uh, people with family history of type 1 diabetes have a slightly uh, higher risk for developing type 1 diabetes but it is not a hereditary condition. Type 1 diabetes is caused primarily by uh, autoimmune uh, process and in some uh, by unknown cause. Uh, autoimmune destruction of insulin producing cells leading to negligible secretion or no secretion of insulin leads to development of type 1 diabetes. Uh, people with uh, type 1 diabetes develop these autoimmune antibodies even before the develop, uh, manifestation of the disease. That means this uh, disease has been there, uh, the autoimmune process has been there in them for quite some time even before the manifestation of the uh, disease. We know that the genetics and genes play a major role uh, in causing diabetes, but uh, that alone is not enough. Uh, the individual fails to maintain a good lifestyle change or lifestyle modification wherein they eat uh, a good uh, healthy diet, exercise or maintain physical activity adequately and thereby prevent uh, weight gain, which is very, very important. Uh, then. Uh, development of diabetes can be delayed and prevented. If this uh, lifestyle modification is practiced as a whole by the family, then the children or the offsprings of the parents will also follow this and this can help them um, in preventing and delaying development of type 2 diabetes. I am going to talk about the role of family members in diabetes care. Uh, family and family members have a key role uh, in helping patients with diabetes uh, uh, to maintain a healthy life and a better quality of life. Uh, modifiable risk factors like uh, uh, obesity which is largely influenced by uh, dietary habits and physical activity. Uh, can be improved with the support from family. They can motivate patients to maintain a healthy diet and also motivate them to do regular exercise. They can also motivate patients from fighting depression and also uh, uh, making patients limit uh, the complications uh, by the way of maintaining good glycemia. Adults with diabetes complications depend largely on family members uh, to maintain better quality of life. Now today I am going to talk about uh, the first aid given to a patient experiencing or developing hypoglycemia at home. Uh, hypoglycemia if not attended in appropriate time can be detrimental to the patient. Um, establish hypoglycemia by checking the blood sugar. If it is less than 70, give them a sugary drink. Uh, avoid giving diet drink as it may not increase their blood sugar and also help them relieve symptoms. So give them a sugar containing drink or uh, any food stuff that contains uh, that's, that's made of uh, sugar. Uh, always follow the rule of 15, test the blood sugar, uh, if it is less than 70, give them 15 grams of oral sugar uh, and recheck blood sugar after 15 minutes. If it is normal or above 100, you can give them a snack. If it is again less than 70, give them again another 15 grams of uh, uh, oral glucose or 15 grams of carbohydrate. Check the blood sugar after 15 minutes. If it recovers, uh, then you can give them a small snack to prevent them developing the hypoglycemia after an hour or so. If it is still low, you have to uh, take the patient to a nearby hospital.
going to talk about uh, diabetic emergencies. The two common diabetic emergencies are hypoglycemia or low blood glucose and hyperglycemia or high blood glucose. Uh, hypoglycemia can be caused by uh, use of drugs, uh, insulins or OHAs uh, when patient is having a concomitant illness which causes reduced food intake like fever, vomiting or diarrhea. Uh, and hyperglycemia can be caused by either insufficient drugs, insulin or OHA or concomitant infections which can increase the blood sugars. Uh, knowing the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia uh, can help patients uh, to get appropriate treatment.